if you love the Lord, give me a beep, beep. Yeah. Looking around the parking lot, I see someone showed up in their truck and their stars and stripes, if you can see that. Today, that is very apropos. Happy Flag Day. On this day in 1777, the Second Continental Congress adopted the stars and stripes of Betsy Ross as our national emblem and standard. And then we see it flown. I mean something special to, to us. I, as a veteran, I love seeing the stars and stripes flown. So happy Flag Day to all. Well, if you are here to worship, let's get it on. Song says, you, O Lord, keep my lamp burning. You have turned my darkness to light. You've set my feet high on this mountain and put my enemies to flight. So I'll praise you as long as I live. I'll praise you again and again. And when I walk through the valley, I will not fear. Amen? Amen. <laughs> hey, you get it. <laughs> One, two, three, four. You, O oh Lord, Keep my lamp burning, you have turned my darkness to light. Set my feet high on this mountain, put my enemies to flight. So I, I praise you as long as I live. So I, I praise you again and again. When I walk, oh, when I walk through the valley, I will not. For you are my strength and my shield When everything around me is overtaken I know I will never be shaken Whoa, I'll 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 never be shaken You alone keep my lamp burning. You have turned my darkness to light. Set my feet high on this mountain and put my enemies to flight. So I praise you as long as I live. Oh, I. Amen. 
I got so excited I hit my mic stand about busting my teeth out. <laughs> but I still won't be shaken. <laughs> to you, O oh Lord, we lift our hearts and our souls. My hope is in you and you alone. I lift my eyes to the hill from whence comes my help. It doesn't come from the things of this world. My help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. Amen. To you, O oh Lord, I lift my soul. In you, O oh God, I lift my trust. Place my trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Don't let my enemy triumph over me. My hope is you. is you. My, my hope is you. Oh God. I am O oh Lord. I am O oh Lord. Filled with your love. You are O oh God. You are O oh God. My salvation. Guard my life and rescue me. My broken about that first song is I, I mean, I like them both, but about that first song, when I walk through the valley, I will not fear. 
You know, all of that 23rd Psalm, you got, I mean, it's a very quotable, very readable Psalm, the 23rd. But as I read it, it's really that one word that sticks out. Through. One small word. If you're in a hard time, if you're in a, a trial yourself, when you're walking through the valley, understand that you're not pitching tents. You're not setting up homestead. You go through that valley. So thank you, Lord. That we know we don't walk it alone. All the poor and powerless, and all the lost and lost. And all the thieves will come confess And know that you are holy And know that you are holy And all will sing a hallelujah And we will cry a hallelujah the hearts who are content and all who feel unworthy and all who hurt with nothing left will know that you are holy will know that you are holy and all we Hallelujah, and we will cry out, Hallelujah, and all will sing out, Hallelujah, and we will cry out,
says that he is God. Shouting, go on and scream it from the mountains. Go on and tell it to the masses that he I'll sing that one more time. Shouting, go on and scream it from the mountains. Go on and tell it to the masses that he You are God and we're thrilled that you are. Lord, may our, may our words, may our life, may our reactions and responses, may everything that we are, Lord, may declare to the, the world around us that you are God. We praise you, Lord. We praise you this day. We praise you this hour. We praise you for a, a chance to just get together in your name. Lord, you are good and there's no one like you. We thank you, Lord. And we praise your holy name. And Lord, we, we gather together in your name to give you the honor that you're due. We gather together in your name to, to turn all our focus, all our attention on you, Lord, and give ourselves a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to you. And we ask you, Lord, in your amazing grace, that as we come to you, based on your crucifixion and resurrection in faith in Jesus Christ, won't you meet with us? Pour out a blessing that can't be contained, God that we could be who you've been created to be to the day we see you face to face. We love you, Lord, and we, we pray for our community. We pray for our nation. God, we ask you to bring the, the peace that only you can bring. Lord, bring a spirit of repentance and revival and renewal by your Holy Spirit. Lord, we come to you offering nothing. We come to you, Lord, in desperate need. Won't you meet us where we are, God? You know what we need, Lord. Meet us right where we are. And we cry out to you for mercy, compassion. Have patience with us, Lord. And move in your spirit, in Jesus' name. And we give you permission, Lord, to use us as ambassadors of your love, your truth, your will being expressed here on earth as we taste of your kingdom. Lord, use us as you see fit. We lay ourselves aside and take up our cross and follow you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, it's good to be together again. Is God good or what? <laughs> Got another beautiful day to be in our cars with our windows up or windows down or be out in our chairs. Just another wonderful day to gather together and, and just be with God's people. And uh, we're thankful for you. Uh, just some practical instruction again for those that maybe haven't been here before. We just take the first few rows of cars and ask you to go out the left entrance as you make your way over. And the last two rows of cars, would you make your way out the right entrance as you go? just to make the uh, outflow a little easier. Uh, we have uh, uh, people attendance to be able to collect uh, Connect cards. We treasure getting those Connect cards from you again as we've been able to gather in person and be able to use those uh, to just get updated information, but most critically, pray for each other. Our prayer teams have really appreciated having those prayer lists again. And so if you filled out a Connect card, please drop that off. Um, Many of you are just giving sacrificially, and we so appreciate that. It's the body of Christ, and we thank you for that. So if you came prepared to give today, we'll have opportunity for that as well. But you just listen to the Lord on that, because I know these are challenging times for many. And So just listen to the Lord on that. That's all we ask. And so there's no pressure out there to collect an offering from you. But if you came prepared and want to do that, you sure are welcome. And we thank you so much for those that have been able to uh, continue to do that during these difficult times. Uh, 
the, uh, the stage we're in as parents, you know, we have a 17-year-old in the house heading into her senior year that I'm 25. I don't know how that happened, you know, but uh, <laughs> I hear laughing from over here. That's not called for. Um, you know, we've got a 17-year-old in the house heading into her senior year, and that's shock to my system as a dad. Um, but we also have all the way down to five months uh, old in our household, and that's a shock to my system as a dad. And our two-year-old Mercy runs around like a wild woman, and we, we love her golden locks flowing in, the hair, hair, flowing in the wind as she runs from one potential trouble situation to another. And so she's at that stage at two years old where you're, you're training your child in the way she should go, that when she's old, she won't depart from it. We're trying to get her to listen. You know, that's kind of a practical way to put it, right? And it can be something as, as simple as, uh, you know, use your fork to take your bites. Don't throw your macaroni and cheese on the floor, all that exciting stuff, right, with a two-year-old. Or the more exciting and critical things, like when we, we have those little outlet safety protector plugs, you know, plugged in. But when we plug something in, sometimes, you know, to remove those, we'll forget to put it back in. And, and we've caught Mercy one time going right over was just starting to jam something in the outlet. And that's when you, you shout out, right? And all the training to listen up to that point becomes very critical, doesn't it? You know, when something's about to happen or, or when a child's going to run toward the street or toward a car that's backing up that doesn't see them, you want that child in that moment to be able to listen because it's a critical moment. And that's why we, we train obedience at all times, right? Because it's, it's conditioning us to to understand authority in our lives and conditioning us most critically to understand, to listen to our Heavenly Father, right? And there's not times that we don't do that, right? And, and sometimes that we do. We always listen. You know, it's a critical time, a critical time with everything going on in our country to listen. A critical time to listen. But as you know, as well as I know, there are so many voices shouting for our attention, Right, so many voices shouting for our allegiance. To whom, to whom shall we listen? Well, I want to continue in the series this morning, the New Covenant Normal. What is the normal Christian life? What's our normal supposed to be? Well, our, our normal as Christ followers is that we listen to the voice of God. Amen? We listen to the voice of God. And of course, we can receive counsel and instruction from those around us. I mean, I'm up here preaching, right? I'm going to be preaching out of the Word of God. It's a, it's a God-ordained thing, right, that we can receive counsel from each other and we can hear the voice of God from another. But we want to be careful as we listen to anyone around us that it's never a substitute for listening to God. And when those voices around us are crying for uh, allegiance and crying for our attention, if those voices are contradicting the voice of our God, then we do not obey. Right? We, we do not ever bow the knee of allegiance to a voice that is contrary to the voice of Almighty God. It is critical, critical that we listen. And to whom shall we listen as Christ followers? The Lord God Almighty. The Lord God Almighty. Look in the Scripture. The, I had an opportunity uh, two weeks ago. I, I spent... Uh, the day doing some things and and went through the book of Genesis all in one chunk and going through the book of Genesis I was very struck with some things you know when you when you go through a book all at once of the Bible sometimes you can kind of hear these reoccurring themes that maybe don't stick out as readily if you're just you know studying intently a piece at a time which is very valuable but sometimes the broad overview all at once to digest it you can hear some patterns and there was a a pattern that was sticking out to me and it was about the voice, and listening to the voice. And the first mention of voice in the, the Holy Word of God is in Genesis chapter 3. You think about, you know, the creation of mankind and what God intended for the human race, and as, as God is interacting, you know, with his creation, with Adam and Eve, you'd think that voice would be mentioned, but voice was not mentioned there. Uh, the first time voice is mentioned is after sin. Right? They, they rebelled against God, and God comes to Adam. God comes to Adam in Genesis chapter 3. And we know the story. They, they ate of the fruit of the tree that was forbidden and all that, and sin entered the human race, and there's been a curse ever since. But listen, listen to the word of our, of our Lord 
Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. The scripture says, Then to Adam God said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and if all you men say amen, no, no. Um, you have eaten from the tree of which I have commanded you, saying you shall not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you, and toil you will eat of it all the days of your life. And he goes on in the next verses and continues to amplify on what this curse was going to be all about on the man. But it was interesting the way he started that out. He didn't start out and say, you know what? You ate from the, the tree that I told you not to eat. He said, you listened or you hearkened to the voice of someone that wasn't me. You listened to a voice that directed you in ways that were contrary to my intentions for your life. Because Adam did not listen to the voice of the Lord his God. And he had plenty of interactions with Eve, right? This isn't about Eve leading Adam astray, right? How many interactions did Adam have with Eve before this point that was perfectly godly? But what did Adam do? He listened to a voice that directed him away from the voice of the Lord. And sin entered the human race. And, and all the, the pain and, and agony and disease and sickness and heartache that we know as a result came from that. So we see that sin entered the human race and God has a plan to have a people. We see unfold in Genesis. God has a plan to have a people that would show his glory to the world. And we see God call Abram, Abraham, and he was going to be his servant. And the promise came to Abraham that your descendants will be as many as the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. It'll be, they'll be innumerable, impossible to count. And the nations will be blessed through you. We see God's covenant with Abraham. Well, time had passed and Sarah was barren and they were up in years. And in Genesis 16, we see a, a tragic instance from the scripture that Sarah, Abraham's wife, the scripture says in verses 1 and 2 of Genesis 16, she'd borne him no children. And she came to Abraham and said, hey, here's my maid. Maybe God just wants to go ahead and and continue the, the, fulfill the promise and continue this line and this, this great nation through my maid and the, those children will be my children. And the scripture says, Abraham listened to the voice of Sarah. Now, of course, if you know the story out of that came Ishmael. Ishmael was not the promised son. Ishmael was not the one. Ishmael was not Isaac. Isaac would let it later come through the miraculous power of God and the fulfillment of his intentions and the, the answering of his voice, the response to his voice. But Ishmael was born. One who would be a contrary person. That there'd be wars waged. Constant friction between the Ishmaelites and God's people. Abraham listened to a voice that was not God's. We see later that Isaac was then born and God had worked miraculously and fulfilled his promise to Abraham and Sarah. And in Genesis 22, we see this, this voice come back, the voice. In Genesis 22, we see Abraham tested that this son, this promised son that was miraculously given to them was, well, God said, take your son, this, your only son, the one whom you love, and go to a, the place where I tell you and offer him up to me. Lay down his life for me. We see Abraham faithfully walking that out, knowing fully that God was going to provide. We see Abraham say that God is going to provide. And sure enough, as Abraham was preparing to lay down the life of his son, God provided. And then we see in Genesis chapter 22, verse 16 and following, God says, by myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this thing and not withheld your son, your only son, indeed, I will greatly bless you. I will greatly multiply your seed as the stars of the heavens, the sand which is on the seashore. Your seed shall possess the gate of their enemies. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. We see the desperate ramifications of listening to voices that aren't the voice of the Lord. And then we see when we do listen to the voice of the Lord, God's intentions are fulfilled. The nations of the world would be blessed through Abraham and his offspring. It's critical 
that our normal Christian life is listening to the voice of our God. Listening to the voice of our God. And that might be an intimidating undertaking for you. You know, you might think, well, I, I can't hear God's voice. Grab his word and hear his voice. Right? Grab his word and hear his voice. And, and ask him to open it to you, that he would speak. And then within the, the boundaries and the confines of his word, God will continue to direct in specific ways. Right? He'll speak to you in prayer and worship and his presence and direct you in specific ways, all the while within the boundaries of how he's revealed himself and his word and our, our moral law and the character and nature of our God and his revealed will and his, he, his unfailing eternal word. His voice can be made known. God is this God of voice and voice is very relational, right? God is very relational. From the beginning of time to now, God is relational. He, he desires to allow us to relate to him in connection through faith. We see in Jeremiah 7, verses 23 and 24. But this is what the Lord commanded, or what I commanded them, saying, the Lord speaking, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you will be my people. And you will walk in the way which I commanded you, that it may be well with you. Yet they did not obey or incline their ear, but walked in their own counsels, in the stubbornness of their evil heart, and they went backward and not forward. And I know this is speaking of the people of God thousands of years ago, but man, it, it speaks a little bit to us today, doesn't it? That God wants us to obey his voice, to listen to what he's saying, and then he'll be a father to us, right? And we'll be sons and daughters to him. We see the same promise you'll hear me refer to in the New Testament as well. God calls us and invites us by the shed blood of Jesus Christ, the perfect one, to cover over us and cleanse us as we repent and come into relationship with God through faith in Christ. He invites us to, to be in living relationship with him and respond to his voice, right? Respond to his voice, and he'll be that father to us. But inevitably, we see in ourselves at times and definitely in the world around us this hard stubbornness of heart where we don't hearken to the voice of the Lord our God. We, we come up with all kinds of ideas of what things should be like and how things should be settled and how we should treat another person and how we should respond to the treatment of another person. And it becomes the devil's playground. God calls us to this place of listening to his voice. But like the people of God thousands of years ago, we at times walk in our own counsels. That is happening like wildfire right now, isn't it? Right? We're walking in the counsel of man instead of the counsel of God. We walk in our own counsels in the stubbornness of our evil heart. And then that last phrase, they went backward, not forward. We've got to move forward, right? As, as the people of God, we, we need to keep moving forward. As a nation, we need to keep moving forward. And I'm not saying moving forward, not looking back and, and making sure these issues don't remain, right, that are in our culture. Uh, but moving forward is dealing with the issues, right? Moving forward is dealing with sin, right? We as the people of God need to never be ashamed to call the issues that we're facing what it is, sin, Right? There's sin issues. Sin issues in the human heart. When this person does this, and then this person responds to this, and, and that was evil, and this is evil. Right? We don't answer sin with sin. Amen? We don't answer sin with sin and somehow justify our behavior by looking at someone else's sin. And this, it's a cycle, right? It's cycling right now in, in our American culture. Cycling that there's sin and sin is begetting sin, which is begetting sin, which is begetting sin. And, and somehow we think, man, I'm justified because look what you did. You know, I'm justified in res my response because look what you did. And, and every camp is thinking that way. You know, not all people, right, by the grace of God, but these, these camps are thinking that way. And man, we need to call sin what it is. It's the reason for which Christ went to the cross. It's the reason, it's what, it's what Christ overcame in the glory of the resurrection. That sin would be defeated in our life and have no grip on us. You know, and I'll preach to myself too here for a moment. Uh, if this stuff going on hooks something in you and me, and we are 
enticed into participating with even inward dispositions that dishonor our God, then it's a tell, telltale sign that there's a work that is not complete in us yet. Amen? Do you think, do you think as, as Christ sees what is going on in the communities around us, in our nation around us, do you think as Christ sees what's going on, he's provoked to sin? Of course not, right? Well, that's ridiculous, Pastor. Well, that's where Christ is calling us to. That's what Christ died and rose again for, that we would come to a place of wholeness in him, that we would, as Matthew 5.48 says, that we would be perfect as our heavenly Father is perfect, that we would be complete and made whole in love, that we would love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and we would love others and ourselves with that unfailing, God-ordained, Holy Spirit-driven love. Now, love, not as an excuse for sin, right? Love that overcomes sin in my life because I'm loving God with everything I am and I'm not loving self-centered nastiness and I'm not loving the, the wretchedness that I'm seeing in another, right? I'm loving God. And I'm releasing that stuff. You know, and it's, it's hard. No matter where you're coming from, it's hard to see what we're seeing in the nation around us right now. And God calls us to this place of listening to his voice in relational connection, listening to his voice. And I was talking to a law, and off, a law enforcement officer this week and he said, I can't watch the news. And I said, I can't blame you. You know, we've got to while balancing being informed as Christ followers, right? So we know how to pray and what we're combating in the spirit to disconnect from these voices that are vile and from the very pit of hell. Disconnect from these voices as, as this source of nourishment for evil within us, really, right? We disconnect from those voices and, and we deeply connect with the voice of our God so that we can hear his voice and allow his voice to drown out the screaming voice of others so that we, with the heart of Jesus Christ, where, where we see Christ sit and overlook Jerusalem and weep for Jerusalem before he went to the cross, weep for Jerusalem who has stoned the prophets, who has resisted God's move time and time and time again, that we can, we can look and, and, and see with, with empathy the pain of people who are rejecting the will of God and rejecting the heart of Jesus Christ. That we can weep for them the way Christ weeps for them and then lay our lives down for them the way Christ has laid his life down for them to do everything in our power to bring redemptive purposes and, and salvation to their lives. You think, well, pastor, there's not much of that going on around here. Well, there is online. Anybody here online? <laughs> you know, you have contact with the nation. Right? You have contact with the world. And we can even use that platform, but I think much more critically, our face-to-face -face contact and person-to-person -person contact to be those that, that see the pain around us from every end. Right, And remember, we've said this over the years, that hurt people hurt people. Right, Wounded people wound people. And sometimes they wound people carrying this badge of self-righteousness and justice. But there is no justice apart from the will of God being expressed in the earth. Right? There is, there is no justice apart from the will of God being expressed as we relate one to another, as we talked about last week briefly, in what the Old Testament calls shalom. Right? That, that all is right in a sense of righteousness before God in our relationships with each other and our relationships with God. There's no justice apart from that. And so we can, we can walk around carrying our banner all day, but if if God's redemptive purposes aren't working in the midst of it because we've, we've felt the compassion that God feels and lay down our lives in the midst of it, then man, if we're not working for the kingdom of our God, we're working for the kingdom of darkness. Right? We've, we're a, a chosen people. Right? We're a, a, a chosen race, a holy peace people. You know, we're, we're called out right, from darkness into the, 
the kingdom of light, into the kingdom of the beloved Son, that we could declare His excellencies. Right? If you're anything like me, man, it takes me about 2.5 seconds of exposure to the news cycle to lose, to lose my call to declare the excellencies of my God. There's some things I want to declare, right? But it's not always the excellencies of my God. We need to stay grounded in the voice of the Lord our God at all times, at all times. But this is one of those times where the two-year-old is running with the fork to the outlet. Right? That's, that's, that's what's happening in our culture, right? The, the two-year-old is running to the outlet with the fork. And it, it's a desperate time where we need to hear. It's a critical time. We need to hear the voice of our God. Because destruction's about to happen. Right? More, more pain and violence is about to be inflicted. We've got to listen to the voice of our God. And the Bible clearly speaks of in the New Testament that all will stand and give an account, right? Before the, the this throne of Christ, before the judgment seat of Christ. All, all will stand and give an account for the deeds they've done in the body to be recompensed. The New American Standard says recompensed uh, for their deeds, whether good or evil. Right? We have this individual accountability. And so believer, non-believer, right? Going to stand before God and give an account, the scripture says. Well, what's the expectation on those who don't know Christ? You know, are they going to listen to the voice of our, our God? Is, is that kind of where they're at? Of course not. You know, that, that's not where they're at at this point, right? And so who, who does the responsibility fall on to listen to the voice of God? Well, it's you and me, right? It's you and I to make sure we're constantly leading the way of hearing the still small voice, hearing the voice of our Lord and directing out of that and responding out of that and, and leading others out of that and pointing people to that, listening to the voice of the Lord our God in the midst of this. And it's only his voice that can give us the needed insight and sensitivity on every front, right? To, to handle these, these issues that we're facing as a country. And, and I hope you're not tuning me out on this because even if you think, well, I'm, I'm never going to come in contact with that, pray like crazy. Pray like crazy. You, you think this isn't a spiritual issue that we're facing in this country? This is 100% a spiritual issue. 100%. Who but us should be on the front line of a spiritual issue facing our country, right? We're, we're the front line. We're, we're, the, we're the soldiers. We're, we're the ones that should be battling this thing. And, and remember, our, our battle's not against flesh and blood, right? It's against spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places, right? That, that's where the battle is waged. And now you, you walk out those things in practicality too, right? I don't, I don't pray and war in the heavenlies and then and then speak to another with the tongue of the devil, right? We, we, we put practical expression to our prayers and our warfare in the spirit, but this is a spiritual issue facing our country. And so we as Christ followers, we don't distance ourselves from it, right? Because some of it's absolutely repulsive, right? For weeks now, there, there are snapshots of absolute repulsive things going on. And I don't care what side of the aisle you're from, there are repulsive things going on. And so we can look at those things and kind of be repulsed, be repelled, right? And distance ourselves from them. But we can't as Christ followers because Christ himself isn't distancing himself from it, right? There's, there's issues of the human heart that are, that are coming out that are incredibly powerful and sinful. And, and God is right here right? He, he's offering the cross. He's offering his blood. He's offering redemption. He's offering resurrection life. And so he calls us, amen. He's, call, he's calling us as his followers that he's right in the middle of it. And he's calling us right in the middle of it too. And that doesn't necessarily mean, hey, get in your car and go to downtown Seattle this afternoon, right? Start your trip. It, that's not necessarily what that means, but go there spiritually. Go there. Bring, bring Christ in in prayer and intercession. Bring Christ into every conversation, every post on Facebook, and every, 
online interaction, every comment section, everything. Take Christ there. When you're, when you're seeing this, this non-ending news cycle, you know, we went right, right from COVID right into the world burning, right? It, there's been no break and it's, it's worse. You know, it, it's gotten worse where I think some of you were pretty worn out on the COVID thing. Well, my goodness, we blew that out of the water, didn't we, in the last three weeks? You know, man, let's go back. <laughs> you know, let's, let's go back and experience some COVID shutdown again compared to what's happening in our nation now. And so we need to bring Christ into this. And as we see this, this non-ending news cycle with everything going on, we need to pray and bring Christ right into our processing of that. Right, right into our processing of that. Because if we try to process this stuff in the flesh, oh baby, welcome to the devil's playground. Right, no matter where you're coming from, I'm warning you as an ambassador of Jesus Christ, that is an invitation into the devil's playground if we're processing what we're seeing going on in our nation in flesh and human terms. We cannot listen to the voice of another. And, you know, should Adam and Eve have a trusting relationship? Yeah. You know, we know from creation that, that Eve was created because there was no one, there was no partner for Adam and all of creation. And so Adam was put into a, a deep sleep and Eve was taken from Adam, right? As a piece of Adam and it's this beautiful oneness that comes as, as man and wife comes together. It's this expression of the, the creative, intensive, intensive driven power of God. And, and so is there to be an int intimacy and trust there and a sharing one to another? You bet. But look how, how the devil slipped in, right? Look how, how the devil deceived and and when we listen to a voice that is not the voice of our God, even from the most trusted source in our life, right? A most trusted relationship, a most trusted outlet of information, a most trusted whatever. If it contradicts the voice of the Lord our God, it's going to lead to destruction, right? It's going to lead to sin. It's going to lead to a, a separation between God and us, God and our community, God and our family, God and our nation. It's critical that we listen to God's voice. Just sharing a couple scriptures and we'll wind down. But Hebrews chapter 3, verses 7 and 8. The writer of Hebrews speaking to the New Testament church tells us that, you know, speaking of the those in the Old Testament that didn't hearken to the voice of the Lord. It says, therefore, just as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as when they provoked me, as in the day of trial in the wilderness. Don't harden your hearts if you hear the voice of the Lord, as people had. Jesus speaks beautifully in John 10 of his intention that we would hear his voice. John 10, verses 3 and 4. He's speaking of the, the gate, the, the keeper of the gate. He's speaking of the good shepherd. He's, he's speaking of all these pictures of himself and his relationship with his people. He says, to him, the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out. When he puts forth all his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. I was reading some of the cultural background to this passage in John 10. It's just amazing. The shepherds in the, in the Palestine in this day and the communication they had with sheep. There was a scholar that, and this was way back, um, 100 plus years, but a, a scholar that was in that region and, and was listening to shepherds, and he, he was British, and listening to shepherds in that indigenous culture dealing with their sheep. And he said it, it almost didn't even sound like a human language. It's like they were communicating in the sheep's language for them to hear and understand. And, and the shepherds could literally separate their flocks one from another when it was time to move on just by making their call, just by speaking in their voice to their sheep. Their sheep knew their shepherd's voice. And sheep, I mean, sheep aren't known for being bright, right? You know, and the sheep would completely separate and, and go with the, the, their shepherd and, and go on the way to safe pasture, even after um, intermingling overnight. The sheep know the voice of their shepherd. It's critical that we listen to God's voice. A little later in chapter 10 of John, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. We want to hear his voice. 
He says in verse 27, just a little later again in, in John 10, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. Do you hear the intentions of Jesus Christ? You know, it's not a, it's not a mysterious thing that's only kept and set apart for the elite. You know, somehow the, the elite few of Christ followers. Jesus' intention is that he's the shepherd and we're his sheep and you would hear his voice and you would follow him and you'd know his voice. And so we, we come to him in his word with expectation to hear his voice. You know, to hear, to hear what he's saying, to expect him to speak and, and lead us and guide us. And this, this has to be our filter. All right, the revealed will of God, the character of God, the nature of God. We must listen to, we must listen to the voices of the world around us filtered through the inerrant, perfect, everlasting voice of our God. And be able to sort through the pitfalls and sort through the deception and, and sort, through, sort through at times the pain speaking, the anger speaking. And, and sometimes when those things are speaking, it's not true. Right? Have you, have you ever had, had something come out of your face <laughs> that wasn't true when you were angry? You know, we don't, we don't listen to those voices and say, you know what? That's true. We listen to the voice of our God and process all the other voices around us through his voice. He who is truth. Let's join our hearts together and pray. Lord, we thank you that while we're in a time of great turmoil, you're speaking. Lord, you're drawing people near to yourself. Lord, I just heard an account this week that even while there's great unrest in some of our urban areas specifically. Lord, I heard an account this week of baptisms taking place and people being saved in the streets. Lord, you're speaking and you're moving. And Lord, we want to continue to join you in your agenda and no other. Lord, you have a plan. You have a purpose. It's motivated by your infinite wisdom. You know the beginning from the end. Lord, it's motivated by your everlasting, unfailing love that is not exhausted in all this. So Lord, we ask you to speak. Speak, Lord Jesus. We want to hear your voice. We want to, we want to live in an, a place of expectation of correction and direction. Lord, we want to live in an expectation of you speaking to us and bringing us correction and direction. Lord, forgive us if, if any of us come to you without an expectation of correction because, man, we know everything. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, God, for standing up and exalting ourselves as if we were you. Lord, Lord forgive us for for times that we look around and we're receiving our direction from what we're re receiving from news outlets and media reports and what Facebook is saying and all kinds of things, Lord, when we, we want to receive our direction from you, we invite you, God, bring correction and direction. In the name of Jesus Christ, to the glory of the Father, we want to hear your voice, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your people standing up for righteousness. We thank you, Lord, for your people praying in interceding for communities that are broken. We thank you for your people, Lord, that we lay down our lives out of our love for our brothers and sisters. We thank you, Lord, for the call of your cross, marking the lives of your people. We thank you, Lord, for the glory of your resurrection, covering the lives of your people. We thank you, Lord, that you've entrusted us with life on earth for such a time as this. Help us to not squander the moment, God. That it would be a moment where what the devil is intended for evil, God, you bring revival in the name of Jesus Christ. Have your way, Lord, we pray. We trust you completely. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, we praise God. We praise God. 
Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus did not wake up this morning worried about what he's seeing on the news. Hallelujah. Right? And so we trust him, we look to him, and we listen to him. We listen to him, and we follow his lead. And may I end with a blessing that we covered last week to the glory of our Father over your life. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift his countenance to you, his face to you, and give you peace. Amen.